Welcome to the Mysterious Domain Movie Palace. I thought um, it might be nice to uh, present a film noir, which is also a 1940s uh, noir gothic romance in the kind of realm of the Corridor of Mirrors. So this film is based on a Henry James novella who also wrote The Turn of the Screw, which The Innocence was based on. And it's called The Aspern Papers. And it was about letters that Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote to Claire Clermont, who was the stepsister of his wife, Mary Bysshe Shelley. And Claire kept them all of her life until she died. So it has this kind of romanticism of a forbidden love and these lovely letters written by a poet to his uh, mistress, basically. And this film was also made in 1947, like The Corridor of Mirrors, and it is called The Lost Moment. And it is very gothic, and it also takes place in Italy, in Venice, so we have our Italian Gothic, even though it's an American um, Hollywood production, it takes place in Italy. And it has romanticized this Venice uh, atmosphere. In fact, you know, again, the Court of Mirrors has gondolas and there's this whole kind of period, I guess 1947, just after World War II, people wanted romance and they still had those old world styles of buildings and furnishings and all of this. Because it's Henry James and it, because it's gothic, even though it's more of a romance, I thought it would be a fun kind of little break from the horror genre. It is a suspense and a mystery story though. So there's a lot of layers to it and I really enjoy it. In its time, it was in a complete flop. And I think that might have had more to do with American audiences just not really getting it. But it had some good reviews as well. For instance, um, Time Out called it a remarkably effective adaptation of Henry James' The Aspern Papers, closer to the shivery ambiance of the innocence than to the oh-so-discreet charm of Daisy Miller or the Europeans. David Thompson said the film was beautifully shot, which it is and that Susan Hayward's performance um, was one of her best because she is, it's a very um, delicate line that she, that she um, plays with in this film. And so 1947, The Lost Moment, a gothic film noir and a romance. Keeping with the film noir tradition, it was produced by Walter Wagner. And Walter Wagner was busy at Paramount Theaters. You know, he was, he worked in a lot of the studios uh, from the 1910s. And he was strongly influenced by European films, which is, of course is what I like. I prefer anything European, American, uh, some American culture I like, but I, I draw on more to European stuff. He was a, both an intellectual filmmaker and he had a great social consciousness, but he also loved these glittering sort of um, romantic melodramas. So he was married to Joan Bennett. Famously, you know, she's kind of wrapped up her career on Dark Shadows as uh, Elizabeth Stoddard Collins. But um, Joan's life was a bit like a film noir um, because she was also in, deeply involved with Fritz Lang, who, of course, is famous for films like Metropolis and M. And, but in 1951, Walter Wanger, he shot and wounded Joan Bennett's agent because he thought they were having an affair and ended up spending four months in prison for attempted murder. 
And then when he came out, he just got back on his career and kind of ended his days with that 1960s production of Cleopatra that totally ended his career. If you ever seen Cleopatra, that was a clon that that was like a toppling edifice, <laughs> barely being able to stay up. Right? It was beautiful, but you know, you know, anytime you have Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, you've got a disaster on your hands. I think. Now, um, anyway, so there's that film noir kind of angle. It's it very much the idea of murder and mystery. Now, Martin Gabel is the director, and he began his career as an actor. In fact, this is the only film that he ever directed, The Lost Moment, and I think he does a darn good job. I'm giving him credit for that. He began with Orson Welles' Mercury Theatre Company in Les Miserables as Javet. And on the radio, he played Professor Van Helsing in Dracula in 1938 which was the debut episode of the Mercury Theater on the air. So he has a link to our genre here, playing uh, Professor Van Helsing. Now our leading man is someone that probably inspires a lot of ambivalence in people because he is just hard to see him as a romantic lead, and that's Robert Cummings. Robert Cummings had a huge career. He's had all kinds of awards. He's been in everything movies television he's just been a song and dance man he's been everything and he has a very uh friendly likable breezy personality and it is hard to see him as a romantic lead because he's not handsome in the hollywood sense but in a way the role that he plays in the lost moment doesn't call for that it calls for a guy who is a bit ambivalent ambiguous and not really romantic because he's on a mission and he kind of gets pulled in to the world of a woman played by Susan Hayward as you've never seen her before you know she's uh a bit like Mrs. Danvers in Rebecca which is another one of my favorite films uh books and films of kind of gothic romance mystery and suspense and all that but she has that quality and she kind of has a double life let's just say and susan hayward is another really prolific actress i mean i think probably a lot of people know her for being in the valley of the dolls it what was interesting about susan hayward is she started out as a model and then she went to hollywood to audition for scarlett o'hara which Joan Bennett also auditioned for. But obviously she didn't get the role, but she got noticed by a lot of directors and producers in Hollywood. They liked her her uh, screen test. And so, you know, she launched her career as an actress. And this film, she has not quite found that uh, rough around the edges, hard boiled woman that she sort of became known for. And it's a remarkable performance, I think. And another interesting thing about her is that she died of brain cancer and she and Agnes Moorhead, who's also in this movie, both were in a film with uh, John Wayne called The Conquerors. It was filmed in St. George, Utah, where they've done a lot of testings for the atomic bomb. And it's believed that uh, the cancer that she got, the cancer that Agnes Moorhead got, John Wayne, all these different actors thought was caused by radioactive fallout from the bomb testings. According to People Magazine at the time, out of um, 220 people involved with that film, 91 died of cancer. So I guess there's something to it. Anyway, she was only 57. Wonder what happened to Susan Hayward. Now it's funny about Susan Hayward, you know, she's a bit of a tough broad, right? <laughs> And she uh, always called the lost moment the lost hour and a half, which I think is really funny. I don't think it's a lost hour and a half. I really enjoy it. You know, sorry, Susan, but I thought you were pretty good in that movie, you know. But anyway, think of it as a lost hour and a half. If you, if you forget the name of the film, just you'll probably remember that. <laughs> anyway, we also have Agnes Moorhead. And Agnes Moorhead plays a role which is very interesting in terms of her own personal life. She plays the central character, the Julianne Bordereau, that um, 
Robert Cummings' character is so fascinated with. Now, she's most famous for playing Endora in Bewitched in the 1960s, and she was the mother of Elizabeth Montgomery, uh, Samantha. And uh, she's kind of a comedic, you know, kind of a exaggerated type of actress, a little bit camp, I guess you'd say. But in this role, she plays it straight. She also uh, died uh, at 74 from uterine cancer, contracted with um, Susan Hayward and John Wayne in The Conqueror in Utah. Now, interestingly enough, her mother outlived her. Her mother lived to be 106. And when you see this movie, you'll see some irony in that, you know. And then we have um, a nice supporting actress called Joan Loring. She plays the young girl in this, and she had a huge stage career. I think she was not known much for films, but she does a really good job in this. The bad guy in the film is played by John Archer, and he had a pretty broad career in stage and films and television. He started out as a cinematographer. Thought he'd be working behind the camera, but lo and behold, <laughs> he became an actor. All that being said, I think this is, like I said, this is one of my favorite genres of film, this sort of romantic, gothic thing, and I hope you all enjoy it. I will be posting another film toward the end of the month, which is my usual time, but I wanted to make up for not having a film in September and botching up Halloween and the black cat being taken down. Crossing my fingers that this one doesn't get taken down, please. Please, YouTube. <laughs> and I, of course, I will be coming up with something much darker for later on. So. Okay. And then in December, of course, we have not only Christmas, but we have Barbara Steele's birthday. So I look forward to that. So I hope you enjoy and get lost in the lost moment. of unsurpassed charm and passion written in the last century by this man, the great poet Jeffrey Ashton, to the beautiful Juliana Bordereau. Over 30 years ago, I, Louis Venable, then an ambitious young publisher, read those letters. For a few amazing, tormented hours, I held them in my hand, literary treasures that publishers from Europe and America had sought long and desperately. It all began with a brief tantalizing note from a derelict artist, Charles Russell, who had vanished years before on the continent.
Venice. I remember the long journey from New York. I remember standing there on the footway of the canal waiting for Charles. And as I waited, phrases from his letter to me echoed through my mind. Juliana Bordereau, still alive. Surely she has his letters, Lois. What a success for you if you got them. The publishing triumph of the decade. What would you like to do about it? Welcome to Venice, Lois. How have you been, Charles? Have you made the arrangements? Yes, I have. All right. There it is, Lois. Juliana. In that house, still alive. The immortal Juliana. 105. That is pretty close to immortal, isn't it? That's where they met. He came to this house as a guest to have Martin Bordero paint his portrait. And he met Juliana. The exquisite Juliana. This is where it began. The same Louis Venable. Always at home with the past. Who would ever have thought that she'd still be here? In Venice, in that house. Have you seen her? No, I doubt if anyone ever sees her. Except her niece, Miss Tina Bordero, and the servants. They're expecting me. There'll be no slip-up. No, I left a deposit of 50 francs with the housekeeper. I think they needed the money badly. But tomorrow, they're expecting you. I followed your instructions, said you were William Burton, a young writer from America. Well, if everything is as you say it is... It is. You'll be well rewarded. How oh, well? I'll send you $500 tomorrow. If you get the letters, Lewis, and publish them, you'll make a great deal of money. I'm not concerned about that, Charles. Whatever money may come of this will go to those who are entitled to it. To Juliana, perhaps. Do you know that Jeffrey Ashton was last seen in that house? One of these days she'll catch you in here and that'll be the end of you. Why don't you see who it is, Amelia? I think you should pull the drapes. The sun's beginning to come into the room. Amelia, did you allow the cats into the house? I thought I heard... No, Miss Tina, I didn't hear anything. Uh, good day, Signorina. I, uh, I am William Burton from America. Oh. Oh. Would you be good enough to tell your lady that I... Miss Tina, he's come. Miss Bordero. How do you do, Mr. Burton? I've been expected. Yes, you've been expected. But this uh, seems a perfect place to write. If I'm uh, not tempted away from work, I should finish my novel by the end of the summer. I'll tell my aunt you've arrived. You and your aunt live here by yourselves? Yes. Isn't it a bit lonely here for you? It's only being with people that makes one lonely. Miss Bordero, I shouldn't like to come here against your will. It's her will that counts. Told me if she ever finds them in here again. In that case, we better get them out of here. My poor. 
poor kitties. I won't let her hurt you. She, um, she wouldn't really hurt them, would she? You don't know, Miss Tina. The thing she says. You mustn't tell her they were in here. I won't. I promise you, I won't. Don't be so frightened. You don't know her. You don't know this house. So far as I can see, this is the loveliest house in all Venice. Not only that, you and I shall be friends. Oh, yes, senor. Yes. Amelia, what are you talking about? Making more trouble? I told you never to speak with strangers. Yes, Mama. Yes. I'm just waiting for Miss Bordereau. Had Jeffrey Ashton once lived in this cold, forbidding house? I felt the past close in around me like a fog, filling me with a nameless fear. I had a sudden impulse to turn and leave, then I remembered the letters. The door to the present shut behind me. Mr. Burton, my aunt will see you. Thank you. My aunt is very, very old. Try not to stay too long. Mr. Burton is here. This was the divine Juliana of Ashton's poem. An ancient hooded skull. Old, old beyond my wildest expectations. I... Sit down. Tina doesn't like strangers. Strangers sometimes prowl. I assure you, ma'am. I'd hear you. I never sleep. I hear every sound in this house. Tina thinks I should send you away. And Juliana, I warned Be you. Be quiet, We Tina. don't want anyone in this house. It's not wanting. It's needing. And you are quite unpleasant to this young man. You think that's right? When he leaves, he should remember us pleasantly. Be nice, Tina. Be nice. Mr. Burton, if you want to live here, it will cost you a great deal of money. I thought the arrangements had been made. Things have changed. 200 francs a month for a furnished... Nothing is furnished. And if you want to live here... I do. I want a thousand francs a month. I'll pay it. I want it in gold. Today. Three months in advance. Today. Go now. Very well. Bye, Miss Boyer. Your rooms are across the Galleria. I'll show them to you now. There are three.
three rooms here that connect with each other. You have your own entrance from the garden. Your mail will be brought to you. You are determined to seal me off from the rest of the house. Why? The arrangements were made for these rooms, Mr. Burton. Since you uh, feel so strongly about me, perhaps it would be better if My I My aunt didn't... insists we have very little choice in the matter. We need the money. And you're willing to pay an extravagant price for this. Why, Mr. Burton? I'll get the keys, Pietro. Fantastic. To leave the most beautiful hotel in Venice for this. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Tina. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Burton. I'd hoped to be here earlier, but by the time I've been to the bank and bought some things, I'm not coming at a bad time. It doesn't matter. In that event, Pietro could have the keys. Amelia, will you show this man where Mr. Burton's rooms are? Come in, please. I thought if you didn't mind, Pietro could take care of the garden. He'll, uh, he'll have plenty of time. I wrote out an agreement. We can both sign it if it's satisfactory to you. We? You, you mean your aunt? I mean, I'll sign it for her. priest I saw leaving the house? Yes, Father Ronaldo. Your aunt isn't... You needn't worry, it's nothing serious. I'm glad. She seems so old, so frail. She couldn't really be your aunt. There must be generations between you. Here's your copy of the agreement, Mr. Burton. something. I'm pleased you wanted to see me. Come in. You can sit there, Mary. It's very comfortable. And you can visit me whenever you like. Or did someone send you? Oh, no. I just wanted to see. going to be a pretty room now. I'm glad you like it. My mother would beat me if she knew I was here. They don't like you. Who doesn't like me? My mother. Miss Tina. I heard them talking. But I like you. What did they say, Amelia? My mother said you'd bring bad luck. And Miss Tina? She's wicked. She gave my cat to Vittorio. Hey, don't do that. Oh, God. Drop your tears. Go on. It's yours. I give it to you. Remember, I, I said we were going to be friends. Let's 
charming, Amelia. I can wear it to church. Yes, yes. Amelia, is Miss Tina always wicked? No. Sometimes she's kind. Sometimes she... It's better when she's wicked. Now the protect me. The sorrow ones. What did you see, Amelia? I have to go back. So soon. And leave some milk for my kittens. It's very dark. Shall I light a candle for you? Oh, no. I know my way. I know all the rooms and all the ways to get to them. I hide sometimes. I have secret places. I know everything about this house. Perhaps so. Uh, one day you'll take me with you. like strangers. We haven't had a cut of beef like that in a year. What are you looking at? The gardener. He's putting the weeds. Your eyes in your head. You have enough to tell the priest already, taking that handkerchief. You want to be sent away? Good morning. It looks like another warm day. The kettle's boiling, that's good. Miss Juliana is feeling very well this morning. She's sitting out on the balcony in the sun. You've been crying, Amelia. That lodger, you'd bring us bad luck, Miss Tina. Sugar jar fell and broke this morning. Last night there was a ring around the moon. Saints preserve us. In all the years I've been here, there's never been a man in this house. And now a stranger. All those boxes and books. He's carrying a walking stick. Mr. Burton must have some business in the city. taken up too much of your time, Father. No. But I did want to get to know you. I am pleased. You must be very lonely where you are, Mr. Burton. At times I am. They're, um, they're rather strange people, Father. In what way? This may interest you. Just look at those signatures. Miss Juliana signed it? No. Miss Tina signed both of them. Oh. Are you concerned about its legality, Mr. Burton? No, I just, uh, well, I thought it was very odd. You did? Mr. Burton, let us be frank with each other. When Miss Tina told me that you were coming into the house as a lodger, I wondered about it. What would a young man, a means, obviously, want in a place like that? Escape from the world, perhaps? Forget an unhappy love affair? Which is it, Mr. Burton? 
Well, neither, Father. I uh, write, as I explained to Vestina. Of course, I do confess a certain amount of uh, curiosity. I'd put it out of my mind, Mr. Burton. A normal young man wouldn't want to live in that house in an intertime. Unless he had a special reason. What do you suspect me of, Father? Miss Tina and Miss Juliana are not average people. They have a life of their own, a world of their own. And a stranger upsetting the balance of that world, even unwittingly, you wouldn't want to cause a tragedy, would you, Mr. Burton? You seem to feel that I have some uh, deep, dark motive. What, Father? I don't know. But I do know that a blunder might unleash things far beyond your control. And my control. I would be very careful, Mr. Burton. If I had any hopes of finding the letters quickly, they were soon dispelled. I was in a blind alley. I had never even so much as caught a glimpse of Miss Juliana or Miss Tina. I wondered what they did and what they talked about. They seemed to me like hunted creatures feigning death. Is that you, Mr. Burton? Please do come in. It would seem I'm not the only one who can't sleep. Well, I, uh... No need to explain. There's no need. I was afraid for a moment I hadn't heard anything. That would be awful, wouldn't it? Just to imagine things. Yes, it would. Mr. Burt. Uh, oh, yes. You must be a very rich young man. want to take my house away, but they can't. They can't. Because as long as I stay here, I'll never die. Never. Do you know much about curiosities, Mr. Burton? Curiosities? Antiquities. Old Jim Cracks. Do you know that kind of price they bring. Do you want to sell something? Yes, I... I want to sell. Go on. Take it. Look at it. 
Look at it in the candlelight. It is lit, isn't it? Yes. It's lit. Of course, if you don't know who he is, it may not seem so valuable. I know who he is. Jeffrey Ashton. Yes. May I ask where you got this? My father tainted it. Your father? I happen to know something about Jeffrey Ashton. That's what writer doesn't. He lived a long time ago, my dear lady. A long time ago? No, it was only yesterday. The music floated out over the garden. You have no idea what famous people used to come here. The greatest of our time. The most brilliant, the gayest. Dancing and talking. But when he came into the house, that dreadful night. Jeffrey! What happened to him? Uh, the letters he wrote you. Do you have them? Would you pay my price for the painting? Would you really sell it? What is your price? I know the least I would take. What might that be? A thousand English pounds. I'll give you a thousand English pounds. No, not to me. Give it to Father Ronaldo. He'll know what it's for. Tina must not know. Is that clear? I can take this with me now? Yes. May I come again sometime and talk to you about him? Who was that playing? Good night, Mr. Burton. You will take the money to Father Ronaldo. It will take a little time to get the money transferred from the bank. But I will see him. Good night. Please go. Quickly. That eerie music still rang and echoed in my ears. Where did it come from?
edged off a precipice into the past. And here was Juliana, real beyond belief, beautiful, alluring, alive. How strange this was. Miss Tina, who walked dead among the living, and living among the dead. Prowling. He loves me. We walked along the piazza this afternoon. And he bought this for me. And he put it on my finger. seen your hair that way. You haven't? No, your eyes shine like that. One would think you'd never seen me before. Never like this. Your dress. It's the same one I wore when we first danced together. Yes, I know. Hold me close, Jeffrey. For a moment I was afraid. I don't know of what. She's asleep. She is too, I think, although you can never tell about her. Father told me he saw you. I can imagine how unpleasant it must have been. In a way, I pity him, Jeffrey. He's leaving for Rome next week to paint Cardinal Petucci. And I'm not going with him. He'll be gone a month. It can be our month away from here, away from his suspicion and hate and that horrible spying old woman. After that, nothing matters. You can write to your friend and tell him we're coming. A month up there in the cold, white snow. Just the two of us. Nothing to be afraid of, no secrecy. Isn't that what you want, darling? Tell me, why do you love me, Jeffrey? I love you because your name is Juliana because of a thousand things I cannot name. Your ring is so beautiful, Jeffrey. Only... Only what? I wish you'd inscribe something in it. I will. I have a feeling someone's been searching this room. Why? Your letters. It may have been father. No woman since time began has ever received such letters. With you. Blow out the candle. Someone may have seen the light. Oh, Jeffrey, to be with you is all I ever wish for. Love me, love me. Good morning, Signore. Doing very well. I'm not doing so good to my back. This is not proper work for a gondoliere. But it's proper pay, hmm? 
Si, signore. This is a funny spot, signore. The grass will not come up. No? No. Perhaps there's too much clay. Yes, but why just here, signore? I'm sure I don't know, Pietro. I saw the signorina this morning. And I said to her, like you told me, if she wished to use the gondola, I am always at her service. Good for you. But she says she have no use for the gondola. These are not friendly people, signore. Just the same. Cut a basket full of roses and have them sent up to Miss Julie. This came for you a little while ago. Thank you. It's a beautiful day. I hadn't noticed it especially. If you'll excuse me. I asked Pietro to cut some roses for your aunt. That was very considerate of you, Mr. Burton, but... Don't you think she'd like them? I had the feeling that she'd love beautiful things. And that once, she herself was beautiful. She was. Is there a portrait of her in the house? No. Oh, what a pity. I would have given anything to have seen what she was like. Her hair down about her shoulders. Her eyes shining. Her beauty, the despair of poets. Was she happy? I've often wondered if beauty doesn't bring more sorrow than happiness. Miss Tina, last night I heard music. Music? We're a long way from the piazza. It wasn't that kind of music. I heard it in my room. It was faint, lovely. It seemed like music out of another century. That came from the other side of the house. You must be a writer of romantic stories, Mr. Burton. No one lives on the other side of the house, and there couldn't have been any music. Perhaps. After all, this place does stimulate one's imagination. Mr. Burton, I've never understood why you came here, but for whatever reason, it would be better if you left. This time I was instructed to see you, Father. By whom? Miss Bordero, the elder. Oh. I uh, purchased a painting from her, a miniature. The sum was a thousand pounds. She didn't want her niece to know about the transaction. She instructed me to bring the money to you. Here it is. She said you would know what to do with it. When did you see her? Last night, Father. And uh, Miss Tina knows nothing about it? No. Well, thank you, Mr. Burton, for bringing the money. If I may, Father, I'd like to ask a question. Why, certainly. Well, I uh, read a rather curious story yesterday. In a strange way, it was concerned with faith, the power of believing. What was the story, Mr. Burton? It was about a girl who seemed to lead two lives, one in the present and the other in the past. You have found out about Miss Tina. I was afraid that you would. My advice to you, Mr. Burton, is to leave. Before I cause the tragedy you spoke about? Yes. Isn't it a tragedy now, Father? Perhaps, Mr. Burton. But if she didn't have the past, she would have nothing. There she knows happiness, even a kind of love. There is nothing, no one in the present who can give her that. That's why, in her case, I prefer illusion to reality. Your money will save the Bordereau house. I can only trust that Miss Tina won't miss the painting. It was the painting of Jeffrey Ashton, wasn't it? Charles. Oh, Louis. When did you get back? You came to see Miss Bordero? No, of course not. I waited at Floria's. Since I had to see you, I came here. Shall we go to my rooms? This is an interesting house. I literally feel crowded by ghosts. 
Why, this is charming, Lewis, charming. Why did you want to see me? I was curious. Why, this is charming, Lewis, charming. Why did you want to see me? I was curious about the progress you're making. After all, it's been some time since you vanished into this tomb. When I sent you the money, Charles, our business was over. I thought that was clear. But your business. If, uh, if you find the love letters, Lewis, it'll be quite a windfall, won't it? The love letters of Jeffrey Ashton in a beautiful little volume. Why, they'll sell like wildfire. Every dreaming girl, every tongue-tied lover will carry the book next to his heart. A million copies, Lewis. A million dollars. I told you, I'm not after money. Yes, yes, Lewis. I know how noble your motives are. Your concern for the world and its need for beauty. But I'm concerned about myself, and I have a desperate need for money. You're being tiresome. It'd be a shame if the divine Juliana should discover that her lodger was not William Burton, an eager young writer. But uh, Louis Venable, an unscrupulous publisher, grave digging for the love letters of Jeffrey Ashton. Now look here, Charles. I don't want to enter I've been discussing your work with Miss Tina. She's uh, quite interested in what you're doing. Don't you think she's a beautiful woman, Louis? Strange, but don't you feel... Get out, Charles. You don't frighten me, Lewis. You've been paid for your services. Why didn't you get the letters yourself? It isn't too late. Get out. My aunt would like to see you, Mr. Burton. I know it's very late, but I saw the light coming from underneath your door. I haven't interrupted your writing, have I? No, no, I, I was just reading. If you excuse me for a moment. I hope that Charles, uh, Mr. Russell, didn't cause you any inconvenience this afternoon. I didn't mind. He's a great admirer of yours. He seems to think you're doing very important work. Oh, Charles was in one of his extravagant moods. Isn't it odd that I can't think of you as a writer at all? Mr. Burton is here. Oh, how nice. How kind of you, Mr. Burton. It's always a pleasure to see you, Miss Bordero. Is it? Is it? Don't close the door, Tina. That is, uh, mightn't we all have some tea together? At this hour? Ah, there's no difference between hours for me. No morning, no night, no seasons. Please, Tina, some tea for Mr. Burton and myself. Mr. Burton may not care for tea. I'd like it very much. There. You see, Tina? Go on, go on. It's so long since I've entertained. Very well. I won't be long. Our best silver service and our bone china teacups. It will be a party, a tea party. It's kind of you to send the flowers, Mr. Burton. Amelia tells me you've done wonders with the garden. And oh, what a wonderful garden it was. I can well imagine. Mr. Burton. Yes? Go to the door. See if she's there. Mr. Burton, give me my ring. Your ring? You have it. I know. I know how it happened. She's kept after me all day. She searched the room. How could I have lost it? You see, she doesn't know. And I've been sitting here thinking, and all of a sudden I knew. 
Last night you heard the music, didn't you, Mr. Burton? You said so. Yes, I did. And you followed the music to my room, and you saw her, and somehow you got the ring. Give it to me, Mr. Burton. Please. Please. when she's like that. She's Juliana, me. And do you know who she thinks I am? Rosa. Rosa? Our old housekeeper. How I hated her. Miss Tina hates her too. Sometimes I'm afraid she's going to kill me. She wouldn't do that. Wouldn't she? Wouldn't she? Last night, she said I had been spying on her. And there was murder in her voice, Mr. Burton. You have nothing to fear. Miss Tina isn't capable of murder. <laughs> what you know about murder? It's the gentle souls who seem sweet and loving to the world with the innocence of children. And then, out of nowhere, something happened. And you have murder, Mr. Burton. The ring. How did you get it from her? Miss Tina wanted me to inscribe some words on it. I was going to return it to you. Oh, words, words. We had no need of that. You and Jeffrey. Yes. You must have been very proud. Oh, yes. And loved him. Yes, yes. But I wasn't as proud as she is, nor loved him as much. I feel sometimes that she's taken him away from me. No one could do that. Oh. I was very beautiful. And he... He was like a god. The ring. Is that how it begins with Miss Tina? She comes here and takes it, and then becomes you, Juliana? The ring and the letters. The letters? How? I used to read them to her as a child. She liked to hear them over and over again. Her eyes would shine as if they were fairy tales. And when I couldn't see to read anymore, I told her where I kept them hidden, and she'd read them to me. Then she wouldn't let me have them at all. And it began. She read them up there, alone, and became me. And I became Rosa. When I ask her for the letters, she doesn't hear me. But they are my letters, Mr. Burton. Mine. And if I had them, she'd never become Juliana again. Where are they? Do you know? Could you get them for me? Would you? Yes, of course. I've asked Father Ronaldo so many times, but he says they belong to her now. And the others, Maria, Amelia, I've asked them, and they're afraid. They know, and they're afraid of her. And that room. Is that where they are, in that room? Yes. I want to touch them. Know that they are mine. I used to keep the letters in a box behind the Bible. Behind the Bible? No one knew where they were. Not even Jeffrey. You were so quick, Tina. We'll have our party now. I was telling Mr. Burton about the dahlias we used to have along the east wall. He may put some in next week, although it's a little late for dahlias. Did you bring the bone china cups? Yes. Lemon or cream, Mr. Burton? Lemon, please. It 
it's quite late. I'd better go. You will come again, Mr. Burton? Yes, I will. Good night. Soon. Soon. Good night, Miss Tina. You were never coming back. Why, Juliana? I don't know. I don't. You've only been gone two days, and yet my life stopped. I dreamed that something had happened to you. And I knew I could never live without you. A moment ago. You do love me, Jeffrey. Yes, Juliana. Yes. This afternoon I ran out of the house. Past St. Mark's. And the old man who sold the pears. 
I tried to remember all the things we said to each other and how we felt. I remembered nothing. I was alone. And you had gone from me forever. I had to have something that was you. I went up to my room to get your letters. Not to read them. Just to hold them. And I came down here to be alone with them. Anything that I can... Mr. Burton, would you be kind enough to send Pietro for Dr. Cassiano and Father Rinaldo? Of course, at once. Someone was in my aunt's room. Yes. I saw him leap through the window. Did you? Oh, yes. I was in the garden. I ran after him, but he got away. Did he, Mr. Burton? I better send for Dr. Cassiano. The events of the night had unnerved me. I kept thinking of one thing only. The letters, the letters, so as to keep myself from going to pieces. She stayed there, blocking my path to the letters and to the end of this terrifying venture. startle you, Mr. Burton. Uh, no, no, that's, that's all right, Father. Have you been out walking? I can imagine it would be difficult to sleep after what's happened here tonight. I wanted to have a talk with you. How's Miss Juliana? One never knows about her. Dr. Cassiano just left. From a medical point of view, she's dying. 
But then, she's been dying for a great many years. Won't you sit down? Yes, thank you. I'd like to put your mind at rest, if that's necessary, Mr. Burton. Miss Tina seemed to think that you were the intruder. A little while ago, Miss Juliana was able to speak for a few moments. She said it wasn't you. I owe you an apology, Mr. Burton. An apology? For what? Oh, the way I reacted to your humane curiosity about Miss Tina. I thought about it after you left. Like my good friend, Dr. Cassiano, I sometimes have a tendency to form snap judgments. We look at the color of a man's eyes, notice his posture, sniff the air, and we not only guess his illness, but decide whether he's a decent fellow or a scoundrel. And uh, your diagnosis was that uh, I was a scoundrel? A mistaken diagnosis. I was mistaken about Miss Tina, too. Because to love a shadow is not love. I was in the house when she was brought into the world. She never had a chance. There was no escape. I thought about you for a long time, Mr. Burke. It seemed to me that you were in love with Miss Tina and that you might win out over your rival, Jeffrey Ashton. If Miss Tina were to love someone in the present, love him deeply, Mr. Burton, that love might cure her. Good night, Mr. Good night, Father. Miss Tina, can I do anything? No, thank you. I'm sorry, you'd rather be alone? No. Do you think she'll die? No, Miss Tina, I don't think she will. There'd be nothing. I'd be lost without her. She's better. It's fantastic, but she's better. No, Tina, she must be left alone. She would know when you came into the room and it would excite her. There's nothing to worry about. I'd like you to get out of this house for a while, Tina. When can I see her? In the morning. If I may be so bold, I would like to suggest that Mr. Burton take you out to dinner. To the Floria, perhaps. You're not keeping something from me. No, Tina. Miss Tina. Yes? It would be a great pleasure if you had dinner with me tonight. I'll stay with Miss Juliana. Everything will be all right, or I won't tell you to go. Miss Tina, would you please? Yes, if you want me to. Will you wear this for me? going, aren't you? Yes, of course. Will you have finished your book? I think so. Will you be glad to go? Not exactly.
I know this place. The proprietor will take good care of us. Food's magnificent. Hungry? Yes. Alberto, si signore, I don't want the signorina to be disappointed, so you order the dinner for us. Si signore, you will not be disappointed. Do you think he'll sing again? Yes, I'm sure he will. Glad you came. Yes. I think so. You know when we were on the Grand Canal and heard the music there? Yes. Sometimes you can hear it from our house when the night is very still. When I was little, I used to wonder about it. And when you grew up? I never thought about it. Do you, uh, remember your family? My parents? I never knew them. They lived with my aunt when I was born. Much later, I was told that they died in an accident. There was no feeling, because there was no memory. But there will always be memories of Miss Juliana. She's my family. Would you care to dance, Miss Tina? Would you? to reach for the singer in a purse. He was a thief. Well, that's strange. He seems to have taken nothing. Oh, no, no, signorina. I saw him before he couldn't steal anything. Well, thank you very much, Alberto. Well, signor. Is our dinner ready? Oh, si, signore. Right away, right Good. away. Thank you. I'll always remember this evening. I, too. When I think how rudely I've behaved toward you these past weeks. No, I, I understood. But I don't understand. And tonight? Tonight? You've been very kind. After you've gone, I hope you won't think too poorly of your stay here. 
I promise you I won't. Isn't there someone waiting for you? I saw her picture in your room. Do you love her? I would imagine you loved her very much. Well, I'm not sure that we ever cared for each other the way it's possible to care. It was more as if we comforted each other while waiting for someone else. be standing here like this with you not wanting to say goodnight I thought it when often at times I'd watch you in the garden and then you'd leave and when you'd come back from the city I wondered why you avoided me sometimes you know what I used to think no but there was some awful secret you were hiding secret and when your aunt told me that she knew Jeffrey Ashton. I thought it had something to do with that. I was afraid that you wanted his letters. His letters? Many months ago, a publisher wrote and asked about them. His name was Louis Venable. I wrote him that we knew nothing about such letters. But they do exist. The love she knew. The love he gave her was hers alone, not to be shared with anybody. Tina. To have known that kind of love, to have filled one's life. Tina, listen to me. Men like Jeffrey Ashton happen very rarely. And what they leave behind, Tina, the glow and the shadow, every scrap of memory, every remembered speech, every letter, belongs to the millions who live after them. Do you want the letters? If I did, would you get them for me? I don't know what I'd do. Or wouldn't do. I must go. Good night. Good night, Tina.
Where are the letters? Oh, don't spy on us. Two lies to my father. Taken his bribes. And now you've stolen the letters, Rosa. I'm Juliana, not you. Give me the letters, Rosa. They're my letters. You took them. Give them to me. He has them now, Mr. Burton. I told him where they were to bring them to me. They're mine. Give them to me. Jeffrey's waiting for me now. Nobody's waiting for you. Jeffrey is dead, Tina. Dead for both of us. Father buried him in the garden near the bower. I killed him. I killed him. He was going to leave me and I killed him. Give them to me. Tina! Tina! Thank you. 